Hey, all you math fans out there, today we're looking at section 5.4, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, we are finally learning the fundamental theorem of calculus in chapter 5. Isn't that kind of fun? Okay, so let's kind of review just for a moment. What is a Riemann sum? Hint, it was in the last section. Well, it's the approximation of the area under a curve. And what did we use to represent it? Well, we could use that big old limit thing, uh, or we could just use a definite integral. That was a lot nicer. So what this section is going to do, it's going to link the Riemann sums and the area under a curve to integration, thus giving us the fundamental theorem of calculus. And uh, some of you have already seen it and you've been waiting for this to happen. Um, and others, you're going to like this too. So let's see what it is. So if a function at f is continuous on that interval, and capital F is an antiderivative of a little f, hmm, we're going back to antiderivatives, then the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx is going to equal capital F of b minus capital F of a. So what this did, even though it doesn't really look like it right now, but what it does is it gives a shortcut. Because a lot of times our curves are not nice curves. They don't really have a good geometry or geometric formula for its area to use it's because they don't always make a square or a triangle or something like that. They, they're like parabolas and stuff. So before when we had those, we had to get the area of those rectangles, um, get the sum, then take the limit as n went off to infinity. It was a pretty lengthy process and one that we don't want to do, you know, eight times. So instead, they figured out, hey, <laughs> We can just do this and it's a lot faster. So let's go ahead and do it. So we're gonna evaluate these. So all we need to do is find the antiderivative of this function that's in here. So we're gonna integrate it. So x to the third minus four x. And then the notation, because this is the definite integral, just to help us rem remember that, hey, I have to plug these in. You're going to put a bar over on the far right, and you put your lower and upper bound in there as well. So we're going to integrate, put the bar with the bounds, and then finish off the rest of the theorem, f of b minus f of a. So plug in the 3. And then plug in the 1. And then just work out the arithmetic. So we have 27 minus 12 minus the quantity of 1 minus 4. <clears throat> so we have 15 minus a negative 3, which usually gives us 18. Usually. So this right here, that was way faster than having to draw out the curve, put in your rectangles, do the sum, get the delta x and, and whatnot, plug it in, do this, get the formula for the sum, evaluate that, and then finally take the limit as then goes off to an infinity. You know, that took several minutes. Well, now we just have one that took like one. So we like this a lot better. Let's try it again. All right, integrate this. So one fourth t to the fourth minus nine t squared over two 
and we're going from negative one to one. So plug in your upper bound, it's one fourth minus nine over two, and then it's always minus, now plug in the lower bound. So if you plug in that, I get one fourth minus nine over two, which gives us a total of zero. So what do you think that means if you get a zero? Well, that kind of means that you have equal areas on top and underneath the x-axis and they canceled each other out. Kind of nifty, huh? All right. Um, let's go ahead and do part C. So first things first, we're going to um, change that T or the square root of t, sorry, into a one half power. And then we're gonna distribute. And then t to the first times t to the half is t to the three halves. Add up your exponents. And now I can integrate. <clears throat> so if I do, we're gonna end up with four thirds t to the 3 halves minus 2 fifths times t to the 5 halves and we're integrating from 0 to 2 and if you ever want to know did I integrate that right find the derivative and see if it gets back to where you started in this case it does so let's plug in the 2 Okay, so you got to remember how exponents work, especially when they're fractions. So three halves means you can raise it to the third power and then take the square root of it when you're done. So two to the third is eight. And the square root of eight is two root two times that four thirds is eight root two over three minus now plug the two into this. So two to the fifth is 32. Square root it, four root two times two. Eight root two all over five. And then the nice thing about plugging in zero is that it usually knocks out the terms with that variable. So the zero knocks those off. And so just combine the two fractions so 16 root 2 over 15. Now some of you are going, hey, wait a minute. There's something in these integrals that we did not account for. What about the plus C that happened? So let's kind of look at what we did on this one for a second. So let's say you did x to the third minus 4x, and then you plug the C in. So plug in the 3. Minus, now plug in the 1. So we have 15 plus C uh, minus a negative 3 plus C. So if I distribute the negative, I get 18. And the C's cancel out and you get 18. So with these definite integrals, you don't need to put that plus C in there because it's gonna cancel out every single time. So the indefinite ones, when you don't have any bounds, it's necessary, but the definite integrals, you can leave them out because they're gonna cancel out. Okay, so that's a pretty good introduction to these definite integrals. So we'll continue with some other more challenging examples in the next uh, few videos.